mind-reading AI that can generate videos from brainwaves. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about some very, very frontier research. It's called Mind Video, and it is all about video reconstruction from brain activity. So what we're going to do is learn a little bit about this current research, the other research that it came from, and try to get an understanding of what the implications of this type of technology might be in the future. What you're seeing right now is here on the left are the ground truth videos, the videos that were shown to test subjects under fMRI, and then on the right, the videos that were reconstructed from the brain activity that was measured by the fMRI. I came across this research after reading a thread from Zi Zhao Chen, one of the PhD students involved in the study. They write, We're witnessing incredible scientific progress in image and text reconstruction from fMRI nowadays. But what about reconstructing video from fMRI? Allow me to introduce our recent preprint, Mind Video. Zi Zhao goes on, our work extends previous research on fMRI image reconstruction, MindE-Viz. While much success has been seen in static image reconstruction from non-invasive brain recordings, the field is yet to explore the dynamic realm of video reconstruction. So to get a sense, the two papers in question here, the first came out last November and is called Seeing Beyond the Brain, Conditional Diffusion Model with Sparse Mask Modeling for Vision Decoding. The more recent research is called Cinematic Mindscapes, High Quality Video Reconstruction from Brain Activity. These are about six months apart. Let's look at that first paper first, Seeing Beyond the Brain. The researchers involved come from the National University of Singapore, the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and Stanford University. They write, for the first time, our proposed MindD viz is capable of decoding fMRI-based brain activities and reconstructing images with not only plausible details, but also accurate semantics and image features, i.e. color, shape, etc. So the way that the MindD viz model worked in reconstructing images from brain recordings was a two-step process. The first is a self-supervised representation learning of fMRI data. This is done using what they call mask modeling in a large latent space. Mask modeling in the context of this paper refers to a technique in which certain parts of the input data are masked or hidden during training. The model is then tasked with predicting the masked parts from the unmasked parts. This forces the model to learn useful representations of the data in order to successfully predict the masked parts. After that self-supervised representation of the data is learned, the model then uses a latent diffusion process, which is a type of generative model that transforms simple noise distributions into complex data distributions. This is a similar type of approach used in things like Stable Diffusion, the text-to-image generator. The study reports that their model outperformed other state-of-the-art approaches in both semantic mapping and generation quality by 66% and 41%, respectively. Now, if this is just super dense and complex, have no fear. Let's try to simplify at core what was actually happening. Basically, subjects are shown photos, or in the case of the newer study, videos while in an fMRI machine. From there, brain activity is continuously recorded. That brain activity is used to create a map of how the brain responds to different types of visual stimuli. From there, whatever sort of proprietary process the researchers are testing is used to reconstruct images or, again, in the case of the new research video, from that map of the brain's responses to the initial visual stimuli. The model is trying to decode patterns of brain activity and use that to reconstruct the images or video. But let's return to Zi Zhao's thread and talk about the shift from image to video. Again, they write, in moving from image to video, we identified three key gaps. One, hemodynamic response delay. Two, lack of pixel level and semantic level guidance. Three, need for generation consistency while preserving scene dynamics. To address these, we created Mind Video. Mind Video is a two module pipeline with each module trained separately and then fine tuned together. Our model progressively learns from brain signals, deeply understanding the semantic space through multiple stages in the first model. In the first step, we leverage large-scale unsupervised learning with masked brain modeling to learn general visual fMRI features. We also utilize a spatial temporal attention mechanism to process multiple fMRI in a sliding window. In the second step, we distill semantic-related features using the multimodality of the annotated dataset. Here we train the fMRI encoder in the clip space with contrastive learning. In the final step, we fine-tune the learned features through co-training with an augmented stable diffusion model, tailored specifically for video generation under fMRI guidance. Our work, she sums up, presents a new method of brain decoding with several contributions. One, flexible two-module pipeline. Two, progressive learning of brain features. Three, recovery of high-quality video with accurate semantics. So in terms of their results, they say they approached 85% accuracy in semantic metrics. 
Semantic classification tasks are effectively tasks where the model has to understand the meaning or the context behind the video. So if it's a video of a dog running in a park, the model should be able to identify that it's a dog running in a park. So this idea of 85% accuracy in semantic metrics means that 85% of the time, the model correctly identified the context or content of the video. They also said that they had a 0.19 SSIM score. SSIM stands for Structural Similarity Index, and this is a metrics that measures the similarity between two pictures. The values in this scale range from negative 1 to 1, with 1 being identical, and negative 1 being they are completely different. So this 0.19 score suggests that they are more similar than they are different. Zijiao also says, our attention analysis revealed critical insights about how transformers decode fMRI data, dominance of the visual cortex, layer-dependent hierarchy, and progressive semantic learning. This shows our model's biological plausibility and interpretability. One of the key things here is that with this research, we're not just understanding the AI technology needed to reconstruct images and videos, but we're actually learning about how the brain works at the same time. Now on their website, they gave a ton of background information and even a Google Drive full of resources that you can see to actually dig into what the results were. But let's wrap up by talking about what the potential implications of this type of study are. Seisman Stoma tweets, one of the examples of technology where the quality is not yet ready, same as neural networks in the 90s. However, when the quality rises above a certain threshold, it will explode and change the world we know. There are a few different ways that that could happen. One is BCIs or brain-computer interfaces. BCIs are devices that allow direct communication between the brain and an external device. So a use case might be someone who's experiencing paralysis being able to actually interact with the physical world again. Another field that's interested in this technology is neuroprosthetics. Think, for example, about visual prosthetics, where someone with vision loss could bypass the damaged parts of the visual system and stimulate brain activity with signals that correspond to the images or videos that they're seeing. As mentioned, this research is also really valuable for neuroscience and cognitive research, just helping us better understand how the brain processes information. Although there's some pretty serious ethical debates around it, some people are interested in the potential for forensic and law enforcement use cases. Think, for example, reconstructing images or scenes from a witness's memory. And then, of course, there is the entertainment and gaming use case, the favorite of science fiction, in which people can control virtual worlds or interact with game experiences simply by thinking thoughts. In any case, this remains pretty frontier technology, but given how much attention there is on this space, it's not hard to imagine that we're going to see major, major advances in this field of mind-to-image and mind-to-video in very short order. Thanks to Zijiao Chen and her fellow researchers for sharing these results. They're exciting to see. And thanks to you guys for hanging out and watching the AI Breakdown. As always, if you're liking it, please like, subscribe, and share, and check out the podcast and newsletter. And until next time, peace.